And look, the language of warfare is not meant to be so like negative and hostile. It's like when sin came into the garden, a war started. When Jesus came and defeated death, that was a major victory. And it says now death has been defeated. We live in this place between Jesus' resurrection and when he returns where we have the power, but we have to access it. We have to be intentional about accessing that power. It, when he comes back for the final uh, return, triumphant return, we will have what Adam and Eve had. There will be perfect communion with God. No more sin, no more dying. In the meantime, we have a part to play in this. And if we get discouraged, it's going to be hard for us to be able to be as effective as he would want us to be. So I already quoted it, 2 Corinthians 10, it says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the demolishing of strongholds. We tear down every argument that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. See, these are action words. This is not passive, like, oh, Jesus did it all. I can't change his mind. If I pray, he's, you know, he's uh, sovereign, and, and my prayers don't make a difference. Tell, your prayers make a difference, Okay. He wants to see your heart. Remember when Jesus was talking to the father of the child that kept having spasms and throwing himself in the fire? And Jesus said, how long has he been like this? You really think Jesus didn't know how long he'd been like that? But we get these questions because he wants to see our heart. He wants to hear with kind of faith. He said that, when I return, will I find faith in the earth? Well, if you're not saturating yourself in the word and worship and with other Christians and, and with life-giving relationships and people around you, it's going to be hard for him to find faith in us. We have to be really intentional and recognize the war, okay? And then in Exodus 15, 3, it says, the Lord is a man of war. So it's not like he's against warfare. He gets it. It's all throughout the old and the new. Um, in fact, the Lord of hosts, that name for God, means the God of the angel armies. And if you read the Message Bible, you see it all the time. Chris Tomlin had a very famous song about that, the God of angel armies, right? He's always by my side. So there's nothing to be afraid about with this, with this topic. The thing to be afraid of is that you underestimate your opponent. Don't underestimate your opponent. He wants to take you out. That's what Peter said, that he roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I've heard people say, you know, like is it the toothless lion. But listen, lies have power. So if you believe it, there's a real tooth there. The reason someone would say it's a toothless lion is because the truth pulls out his dentures. <laughs> he can't gum you to death. <laughs> but if you believe the lie, there's power in the lie. He has no authority over us. But if you believe the lie, then he has power over you. So that's why this is so important to have the truth of the word of God in you and not for you to filter it and say, well, I believe this part, but I don't believe that part. Be really careful of that. In a way, that's kind of like blaspheming the Holy Spirit. It doesn't mean we can't have differences of opinion about what the word means, okay? Because that, that's true. That happens. But what is our goal and our intention is to be transformed into his image every day, more, with ever-increasing glory, it says. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the next one. Uh, is that where First Timothy is? Yeah, okay. So I just was remind, reminding myself of some of the verses of songs that I listened to before I became a Christian. Some of you may remember this. But at the top verse, it says, a Cold War is a state of political hostility between countries. So the political hostility in the kingdom of God is two different government systems, the government of Satan and the government of God. So they're at war with each other. Satan has no weapon he can use against us except a lie. Okay? So once you know the truth, you've countered his lie. The truth will counter the lie. Now, of course, there's sickness and there's disease. That was through Adam and Eve's sin. Death came in the garden. But we pray against all of that, right? And Jesus took the curse of that thing to the cross with him. So we believe it's God's will to heal us. And he's not using sickness to teach us a lesson. He wouldn't be a good father if he did that. So what does the devil use? It says threats, propaganda, and other, other measures short of open warfare. Because he can't touch you. You're God's child, but he can lie to you. And he can tempt you. So there's no weapon he could use against you except a lie. And you don't have to believe the lie. All right? So I don't know if you remember the song, Stairway to Heaven. Uh, I sure don't like talking about secular songs in church. But I'm just trying to expose how the enemy uses these things to get in your brain. I, I was a musician in high school, and that's when that song came out. And we knew right away. It wasn't a stairway to heaven. It was a stairway to heroin. They're talking about drugs, talking about getting high. You know, if you buy this little bag, you'll feel like you're in heaven in about 15 minutes. 
after you inject it. See, that's called medicating your pain. And that's why people use drugs. And it's so addictive that after the first one, it's almost impossible to stop. I remember one time a guy offered it to me for free when I was in college. I was a football player and, you know, I was in good shape, working out all the time. Another friend of ours who we knew was younger and not in college, but all he did was throw his arm over the back seat and let a guy inject him with heroin. At, I think he was 16. And I don't know how long he lasted, but he died of it. At, you know, maybe 10 years later, I don't remember. It might have been more. But, like, once that first hook gets in, it, it's much harder. There's a big barb on that hook, and it's much harder to pull it out than it was to let it in, right? And there's all of this treacherous activity that goes on, and people think, oh, I could handle my alcohol, no problem. Yeah, 99 out of 100 times you handled it, but at that, that hundredth time only takes one mistake to get a girl pregnant, right. and that's going to change your life. Right now, you could say, well, you know, had an abortion, and, and we would never condemn anybody for having an abortion prior to you getting saved, right? We all made horrible, horrible decisions and choices, but now, hopefully that you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit says, that's a life. And maybe you could put the child up for adoption if there's a mistake. I'm not condemning anybody or judging. I'm saying you have a whole new grid that you look through, and you could be healed of any of the pain that came with that. But if a girl that's not a Christian thinks, oh, it's no big deal, I'll just have a procedure, there's something really profound about life. And, and destroying a life in your, in your body, it's going to scar you emotionally uh, as a woman and a man too. You know, we're, we're meant to raise children and raise families and not take them out, right? So there's, there's scar tissue that we have from when we were living a belligerent lifestyle against God. And now all of a sudden he's saying, no, I love this, uh, before I get to those songs, 1 Timothy 1.18. This charge I entrust you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them, say it with me, you may wage the good warfare. So you're supposed to get your word and war over your word, not just for you, for your children, for your family, for your finances, for all the things that he tries to use against us and lie to us about for favor on your job. War over those things. What does that mean? You're not passive. You war over your word. Now, another one, I don't know if you remember the Beatles, so Stairway to Heaven was voted on many of the things I looked at as the number one song, rock song, and then the Beatles were recommended as the number one band, okay? Anybody old enough to remember the Beatles? Remember the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? Did you ever wonder what the heck they're talking about? Does that make any sense as a title of a song? It's LSD, <laughs> Lucy Sky Diamond. It's like code words, right? It's what drug dealers do. They, they talk with code. So, I mean, they got totally messed up on LSD, and then they opened this big pit of hell when, when they got involved with Hare Krishna and all that stuff. They were impacting kids all over the world with that. What if they had become Christian, right? They could have easily become Christian, but the devil pulled them in the wrong direction. And then the last one, sympathy for the devil. Is there anything hidden about that? As a senior in high school, I went to Madison Square Garden and saw the Rolling Stones, and this was their final song. I mean, how, how much more blatant can it be? We have no sympathy for the devil as Christians, okay? And you can read it. And it's really like there's, there's this whole thing around that scene of rebellion is, 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 is looked at like a good thing. Like you're on the edge and you're, you're going to steal and, and hell's angels are looked at as if they're cool. They're not cool, okay? They're murderers. So which camp you want to be in? It's pretty obvious, right? I want to be in God's camp. I want my works and my thoughts to be productive and redemptive for the kingdom of God. But if I'm not careful, there's a whole bunch of noise coming in my ears that's going to try to pull me the other way. And the devil has a big arsenal, so it doesn't matter which one he uses. He's going to find the one that works on you. And then you have to say, nope, sorry, I'm not giving into this thing. I have weapons of warfare too. This is number one. Word of God. Spirit, number two, Jesus as our model, knowing the Father's love. These are all the cornerstone principles that we have to own. We have to own them. It can't be somebody else's understanding. You have to own all those things. We doing okay?